probably started with the old school paint. Mm. There's a lot of heavy metals in the old school paint. Mm. Uh, he's seen it once or twice before, but not nothing as severe as me. Really? Yeah, because I used to paint a lot indoors. Uh, you know, I've never wore a mask in no. my life. Because of the warehouses and such? You... Yeah, but also, when I was in KIA, I used to s sleep at my friend Guilty 104. It's flat, and I used to, and we used to paint in the room I'd sleep in. They'd paint a piece all day, mm. and then I'd sleep in there at night. In the morning, I'd wake up and I'd have paint all over me, and I'd be coughing it up. It'd be like multicoloured greenies. Really? Multicoloured greenies. And I never thought anything about it. Years later, obviously, it come back to bite me, and I was painting in Rome one night. It was, man, because it gets really cold in Rome in winter. It was freezing, it was a weird sort of cold, and the pet the using fat caps, the paint wouldn't move. It was just stood stuck in the air. It was strange. And obviously I was breathing in, I went really dizzy, collapsed, and I got up and then I just started bleeding literally from every hole in my body. Street Culture TV. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Killer Podcast. Here we go, here comes some real trouble for you. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London, and trust me, central as you could ever be. Uh, big shout out to all the sharers and carers, people from very early doors, um, from, uh, uh, yeah, from the pod trap that have been checking us, and, uh, you know, we accelerate into the top of the spheres, um, ready for your ears. Our sponsors, the mighty GK Nifty Heads, have a massive 100,000 play-to-earn NFTs to give away to the streets. Just hit the link in the description or go to gkniftyheads.com and get ready for Hot Awards Summer 2024. Uh, yo, um, inside the house, the North is most definitely represented. This gentleman right here has been there, seen it, done it, damaged it, and you know what with it. <laughs> the life and times, the stories behind the stories, KIA platoons, cruel inside the place. Respect, my man. <laughs> Uh, elevate your uh, your uh, horizons for the next 20 years. Just give you an intro like that, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a great one, mate. You came down today, wasn't it? Yeah. It's been on a hell of a journey. Yeah. I'm used to journeys, though, so today's was not too bad. Yeah. You we were know. kind of getting into it just before we started, and, you know, a few, few short, brief conversations, it dawned on me how well-travelled you actually are. Yeah, I've been around, man. Yeah. I get around, I travel a lot. I like, uh, I'd just done a, a month's trip through Italy, uh, Austria, to Munich. I used to live in Munich before the lockdown. Really? For about five years, I think, yeah. Really? Um, what is it about travelling that you like? And, uh, apart from the uh, obvious, I mean, what's 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 the sudden surge of? I'm a gypsy. I have I have the wanderlust, as they say in Germany. You know, I, I, I'm, I come from an Irish family, uh, and my other grandfather was Polish, so I'm. I suppose I'm a second generation immigrant or whatever, <laughs> and yeah, I feel at home when I'm moving. If I'm on a bus, in a car, on a train, that's when I'm, I'm feeling good. Really? I don't like to get there as much as I like the journey, if you know what I mean. Which is, that's, a, that's a motto for life right there. people hate the journey. <laughs> yeah. They like to get there. Me, I just want to be on a sleeper train to somewhere and I'm happy. I, can't, I know exactly what you mean. There is that feeling of um, uh, liberation. Yes, we're nomadic. Like we started off as nomadics, mm. you know? Humanity is a nomadic race. Graffiti definitely leans in that general direction of freedom, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Is That's that what, what it's about for me, freedom. Yeah, is that what grabbed travelling is freedom, man. Is that what grabbed you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, in the beginning, what grabbed me? Mm-hmm. 
I don't know what grabbed me in the beginning, to be truthful. I thought about this a lot and... Because uh, I was... I actually got caught writing my full name around my area before I'd ever actually seen graffiti. And my dad had to come and pick me up from the police station. I got cautioned. I so was how old were you at that time? 11. 11? Yeah. And later that same year, when I started secondary school, because I was already breaking at junior school, I used to go to Rock City in Nottingham, I started actually doing scribbling on the desks, like my tag was solar. And I don't know where I'd seen it, but it was like the, the classic thing, the bubble letters with a cloud, chessboard, uh, you know. <laughs> the things what they called lightning bolts. Yeah, yeah. Lightning mm -hmm. bolts, stars, just things like that. What's um? Because uh, one the moment you said Rock City, obviously the venue, but Rock City Breakers, you 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 were you bear witness to. Well, yeah, I was the youngest. One of the youngest who used to go there. Me and my friend Jamie Doherty, we used to go from junior school, and we was good. Obviously, when you're kids, you're fit and you're mm. energetic. Mm. And, yeah, there was the Rock City crew and the Rockatrons. And just before I stopped doing it, me and my friend, we actually got put in the Rockatrons. It was like, I never really did anything with them. And I think they actually split up, like, a few months later. Wow. But, yeah, at the time, it was massive for me. And yeah. that was my first, like, introduction to, like, a being in a crew sort of thing, it was really exciting at the time, I remember. I've never forgotten it. How many were in the crew? Oh, a lot, man. And I can't... I, I, there was all a lot older guys, you know. I, I don't man, even... Nottingham have always had it represented, like, man, all the elements. Yeah. Fuck. Nottingham for graph, you know. Nottingham for breaking, MCs, like, all generations, right up to the current day. It's like... Man, it's almost there was like a lot of good skaters in Nottingham as well. Skaters the too, yeah. Skaters, yeah. Like uh, I remember Tommy Thomas. He was always around skating in the Market Square, and we'd break there, and that's what kind of grabbed me, you know. See all these guys. There was like larger than life, and I was young, mm -hmm. so very impressionable. And I was a street kid, mm. you know. I was a lad to do what I want, man. I was catching buses on my own. It's not, it wasn't normal. You was, you had, as you know yourself, we had a lot more freedom than uh, kids do, but you, yeah. you still didn't... Kids my age weren't allowed to do what I was allowed to do. Uh, so I was very lucky, I think. I see it as lucky. What, what, what did your mum and dad do for a living? Were they, were they together, uh, what did they do? Uh, my mum and dad split up when I was really young, but my dad was a hand flat, flat knitter. He pushed the big machines and made the thick oh, what, fishermen's yeah, jumpers. Yeah, yeah. It was a massive oh, wow. industry in Nottingham. Really? All my family was in the knitwear industry, the rag trade, yeah. Really? At one point, yeah. Ain't that something? And my dad has, like... There was eight, eight brothers and two sisters, so I have a massive family in wow. Nottingham. Wow. So, in a way, you were kind of able, by default, to be the kind of, you know, the, 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 the black sheep and just kind of do what you want to do? I was, yeah, because... <laughs> Uh, like I say, I lived. I didn't live with my parents. They split up, and they was having a difficult time. So I, I went to live with different aunties and uncles and cousins. So yeah, I had a lot of freedom. It was great, man. Wow. Yeah, that's the breeding ground for the kinds of uh, vandalism boogie we like talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when did you first grab the paint? When did it first kick oh, off? You know, I did my f I, the first piece. I remember doing was with two guys from the area I'm from, Besswood. Ike 109, he wasn't called that then, and Hunty 273. <laughs> These are new names, Google and, that. And, uh, yeah, we, we racked a load of paint, did a chrome, and that was it, because we was, Hunty was a, uh, a DJ, and we was a little bit of rappers as well, you see, but we was all breakers as well. We was just immersed into the hip-hop thing, you know? Mm -hmm. It was our thing, we was mad on it, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then me and Ike went on to do a lot of graffiti together. We ended up in jail together later. Uh, 
we was like pretty much, this is before, well before computers and that, and we was mm. famous then as mm. kids in our area. Or Everybody knew computers. us. Yeah. They have loved us or hated us. It caused us a lot of problems as well as a lot of great times, you know. Well, like through racking and things like that, you mean? Through racking and obviously the older generation hated us. Yeah. We used to be walking down the street and then some guy would walk up and just swing a punch at us. We didn't know why and then obviously we knew it was because of the graffiti. Mm. But Really? You know, so yeah, we had a lot of violence. There was a lot of violence around us. Wow. Um, when did you do your first train? Oh, I think it was New Year's Eve, 1988. Slanting Yards in Nottingham. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty hardcore, man. The festive season. I never season. forget that. <laughs> no, talk to me. Talk to me. What was that? What was that like? Oh. What, were the, what was it? What was it like getting into those kind of uh, establishments back in those times for Nottingham? Uh, well, there was free entrances back then to the, the yard in Nottingham. I used to go in across the rubble, which was like basically easy to get in. It was like a wasteland. They'd pulled down a lot of the old tenement factory buildings. It was really run down mm. again at this time. And it was just rubble, man. There was holes in the ground. You could like literally fall down a hole and you'd go 30 feet. Yeah. You had to be really careful. Or you could go in the back way through the trains or you could come down past the, the signal house along mm. the lines to it. Uh, yeah. But it wasn't that difficult to get in. Once she was in there, I had a few chases in there. I had a chase with uh, Right 129 when I was painting my first whole car there. Mm. It was pretty crazy, but yeah, I got away, went back and finished it. Well, Steve, <laughs> yeah, but listen, I live, I live vicariously through you guys. <laughs> and I say that broadly because each story is different. There ain't, there ain't no, listen, people might get the wrong idea. I'm not about that life. The idea of doing something to that extent, criminal damage and getting, you know, and not walking away feeling any which way about it. Me, I'll be going, I'm thinking, fucking hell, I'm just sucking my thumb tonight. This is fucking, what have I just gone and done? Because, you know, it's always the drink that does it, doesn't it? But, you know, yeah. when you're stone cold up, when you're going for it, and you're actually doing it to a lot of people, that would seem like, wow, that's, a, that's, a, that's one hell of a, a, a decision. Yeah, it's always dangerous to be around trains, no matter what, even if they're still, because they can always move, and I've witnessed it myself. Have you? But, uh yeah. What, so you'll be painting and then all of a sudden... Train just... will move, yeah. Really? Yeah. Whether it could be shunted or something. Trains move. They're not, you know. Yeah. I was in Belgium once with uh, Score and... Uh, Shine, I think, and Puns. Wow. And we were disturbed and we had to get under the train. Yeah. The guy started the train. We couldn't get out of the train. And you could have put moved that train at any second, you know. Fuck. But trains yeah. move. You have to be careful. I mean, I know a lot of people who have been injured by trains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I hear stories, as you can imagine, you know, the get-ons and the, the, the weaving and dodging and the... I mean, you know, you're seasoned in this, like... Yeah, and I'm very careful. Yeah. I don't drink or take drugs anymore, so... No. I'm all about... The action, yeah, and getting the photos after. So I'm really careful. Well, we'll come back to the action in a bit. Let's uh, let's continue with the, the the story thus far. So, from the young age of being banging to hip hop, you were lost in the music, lost in the moment. What what then happened? Were you did you? Because you've mentioned to me that you know you you got pretty heavy into the, the drug game. Um, was yeah. that a little bit later in...? Uh, 1989, I, I, I trace it back to this. 1989, uh, I was with my crew, KIA, and we went to Bridlington. Pops was painting at Bridlington. Nice. I think it was 89 or 90, yeah. I can't remember. And we went there, and Pops should have won that, I'll just say that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that argument's been going on a long time, but on the way back, uh, I was in a car with a couple of guys, uh, Wrecker, uh, another couple of guys, Chaz, 
and cars, and we was in a Mini, and we got hit in the back of the car by a Volvo. And yeah, I went through the back windscreen, like came back in, and then got through back out in the force. What? Uh, fractured my spine, bust all my ball and socket joint. I had oh, petrol that's... burns all over me, and all of my legs and arms and stuff. They said I'd never walk again, but when I got out of hospital eventually, I was on morphine and stuff. Right. And they just cut it off like that. And obviously, at the That's time, bad, I didn't, I didn't know what was sign. happening. Yeah. So I replaced it with... I think I was replacing it with alcohol and other drugs. And then I found uh, heroin, yeah. Mm. And it, it soothed the pain. Wow. So you would have been, what, 18... What, like you were... 19, 20, yeah. yeah. Yeah, heavy. Yeah, that's heavy. How long were you addicted to heroin? About 10 years, a decade, maybe more even. Wow. A long time, I was selling it as well, so that's the only way I could, you know... Keep up with the habit plus also survive. Yeah. Because a, a lot of my other friends was on it. It was like the Gulf War time. Yeah, I remember. You know, the first Stormy one. Norman and all that. Yeah, and... The streets of Nottingham was all of a sudden flooded with high quality heroin at a really cheap price. Really? It was like unbelievable. My whole, man, like the whole of our, my generation was affected in one way or mm. by it. They know someone. Mm. You know, families were destroyed by it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the hardest thing is that there's two types of people when you see someone begging that's like, you know, ill with drugs. Yeah is if you've been a victim of it yourself, you hand people the £20 note. Yeah. If you're the family of somebody that was a victim of it, they've just got no time for it. Yeah. It's because of the damage it does. Yeah, it does, man. It destroys communities. Mm. It's a shame. So, did you, were you painting or piecing at that time? Yeah, I was painting and piecing. During my addiction time, I was obviously not as active but I'd always be doing tags and stuff. I was around writers, some writers still. And I was, I'd do pieces and that, like, I used to paint. On that, I was on the free party scene as well, so I used to do painting warehouses and stuff like that mainly then. I wasn't really painting a lot in Nottingham, Hall of Fames or anything like that. No. But, uh, yeah, I kept my hand in there. Where were you painting? Hmm? Where were you painting? Uh, whew, I painted... Because I had a, I had a warehouse. We used to do squat parties and stuff in there. I painted in there. Right. Painted in London. I used to come up here a lot. Uh, Vauxhall, I remember. Mm -hmm. And there was loads of old abandoned pubs and parties in them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At this time. Right. Yeah, because yeah, it was way before yeah. gentrification. So and like that. we, I always used to bring, because. I was coming to London before that. Mm. So if I knew I was coming to London, I made sure I had something to tag up with. Yeah. You know, because I wasn't like an, uh, the, the, another kind of addict. I, I had enough heroin to, you know, mm. I was okay. And I was mm. feeding other people, my friends' habits as well. So mm. I didn't have to worry about going out shoplifting or stuff like that. Because mm, you were able to I sell. was maintaining myself, yeah. Wow. Did it ever get risky? I mean, there's yeah, a lot of... Yeah, it's always of, risky, yeah. man. It's... What's the craziest moment where you were in in the drug scheme of things? <sighs> Crap. I mean, there must have been loads. <laughs> uh, I mean, I can't talk about a lot of it, obviously, because... Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, probably better not talk about yeah, it. Yeah, it's a bit you know? hot. It's a bit hot. A bit hot in here. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you were, like, as we were saying at the start, you, you moved about a bit um, and in tow did... The graph for you, yeah. What's your favourite? What was your favourite time in graph? And what like? What, where did you like painting the most? Whether it was a track sides or walls or wherever. Oh, that's a hard question. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's harder than Aaron question to be fair. Probably right now, to tell you the <laughs> really? truth. Really? Yeah, this year. Really? Yeah. Well, yeah, you are moving. You're doing a lot. You are doing a lot, aren't you? Because, you you know, you get more and more contacts and you become more and more good at what you do, Yeah. you know. Yeah. You're more relaxed at it and at the moment I'm, 
I'm doing what I always wanted to do when I was a kid. I always wanted to paint old cars because of subway art, but yeah. I, I couldn't. I painted a couple in Nottingham, but it was not the same. Yeah. It was like, you know. What's the process of painting old car? Like that. That well, to me is a, huge. It's a it's a serious mission, man. I mean, you're looking about taking thirty cans mm. in, into a yard. To say the last one I did, which was like about five days ago, mm-hmm. was with um, an Italian guy and a Ukrainian guy. Mm-hmm. So we're taking a hundred cans into the yard of us mm-hmm. and four crates to stand on. You know, it's a lot of a lot of logistics. Mm-hmm. Before I even get there, my friend, uh, what name should I use for him this time? We'll say because that's the name he used this time. Right. He's there watching the yard for days, finding out what where we can paint mm-hmm. and everything. Mm-hmm. It's like a job, and he has a job, mm-hmm. what he goes to all day as well, remember? So this guy's like the most dedicated writer I've ever met. Wow. And then we get there, my friend, he, he comes, and then with all this paint, we have to get it into the yard without no one seeing, so... We don't want to have all the paint on us at one time, so mm-hmm. we, we I mean stash spots and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And different, what, this time we painted on hmm? all differently located. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And and bearing in mind, my my friend's like a, he's probably the, as far as I know, the greatest whole car king in Europe. Painted hundreds of whole cars, hundreds of beautiful whole cars as well, wow. full colours, characters. I'm sure we we'll know who he is. And he he like. He's labelling all the cans up what colours they are because it's dark. dark yeah. This time we didn't have to take ladders because it was on a platform. Yeah, because sometimes well, there isn't yeah. one, right? No, right. sometimes, you know, you're talking chest height before you can get to start painting. It's Jeez. it's difficult. But this time we was on a platform, so we had, like, a crate each and a spare crate. We weren't two crates high. So... Virtually to the top, not quite to the top of the cars, but yeah. How long does it take? Uh, we was there for about, I think, 90 minutes to paint full colour whole cars. Uh, yeah. An hour and a half. Yeah, which is a long time to be there. Yeah. Maybe even longer, you know. Really? And no one, and there's you a, don't see we're anything? We're on a station with, where there's a police station on the station. Yeah, so this, this is the it's bit, risky. They're this not the, expecting this, the this to happen. How, yeah, they, they're not. Uh, yeah, yeah, they, they haven't got any sense of security. No, because they're thinking no one's going to be crazy enough to do this. Wow. So, wow. but it is stressful and at times it gets stressful. People, you, you never know. Yeah. You know, you, you, you get used to it. I don't get an adrenaline vibe off it anymore. No. That can be handy in itself, getting an adrenaline vibe, but sometimes that adrenaline vibe can push people over the limit as well. Yeah. You see, it gets very stressful, and they're like, just want to finish and get out of there, yeah. and you never all finish at the same time. No, no, I bet. So, yeah, things can get stressful, but it's great. I love it. Don't try this at home, by the way. This isn't for you. This is a nice little story. Cowboys and Indians and all that sort of thing. Yes, we do not have a cake. Robin Hood and all that. Yeah, all of that good stuff. Robin Hood and his merry men. That's right, that's right. Nottingham Forest of Sherwood. (laughs) (laughs) Um, uh, Yeah, Uh, a lot can happen in 90 minutes, can't it? A lot, man, yeah. Like you, you see an animal, that's enough to make you jump, surely. It is, man. I mean, you're always seeing things out of the corner of your eye. In the night, in the dark, I'm your sensitive. eyes play tricks on you. But what you have, what you have to do is you train yourself to ignore it, but keep looking, mm. but not let it. You don't let the fear in. Fear is your worst enemy it's when you're painting, yeah. especially whole cars. You want to be away from the fear, and you never show the fear to other people because it's also catching. Once you, you know. Oh, sh- yeah. You, know, you I bet. give it to other people the fear. Wow. As well, it's like a bad. Other people can give you the fear. Yeah, it's like yawning. Yeah, that's a good way. That's a good way to put it, man. Yeah, yeah. Because the moment you start, then they start. Yeah, it's twitchy. <sighs> Digital. That's some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's some psychological shit right there. It is. Yeah, you you train yourself for it, man. Over the years, you know, you. This is how you do it. It's like a military operation. That's why they call it an action. Yeah. That comes from the military. That word is like a military word. 
Man, you just made my mind wander. Um, if you're if if you if you're done if you're finished and like you say everybody's you know not anxious they're not in the you know they're still in the zone. What's the general feedback if all goes well? <sighs> Is everyone Euph relieved? Is Euph it like a euphoria? Euphoria. Uh, Straight to the pub, that kind of thing. Mm, I don't really drink, but I, I will have a celebratory bottle of beer after sometimes. This time we didn't, because none of us are really drinkers anymore. Yeah. So we didn't have a drink. My friend went, my friend went back to another part of Italy, and yeah. me and my f other friend, my Italian friend, yeah. we had to wait then to try and get the photos, which is even harder than painting yeah. the trains. Yeah, you know? but that's why you see so many night shots of train graffiti because getting photos in the daytime is that's more risky than doing the train a lot of really, the time. Yeah. Especially if you're trying to get it on a station where there's a police standing there in front of you. Yeah. You know? That's tricky. So as we were trying to get drone footage, yeah. video footage and still photography. Wow. Which is that's a trick in itself. Yeah, but Europeans you do it differently though. Europeans, I mean, like I, I lived in Munich for five years, and the Germans, the Germans are, are really great at painting trains. They're really organised. I mean, when we was painting the S Bahn, I'm in a crew from Munich called 1328, mm -hmm. which comes from the Augustina Brewery. That's the year that the monks started brewing the beer. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. Uh, okay. And when we paint in the S Bahn in Munich, they're all connected by phones. We have like at least two or three watchers watching the roads, the entrances. They're all on the phone telling us how long we got, what? if they've seen anyone, because you might have like, we only have like eight minutes to paint a back jump. You're kidding me. So, yeah, it's highly, it's very militarized. That's some trains. tech as It is. The I often, Bavarian police, they don't mess about neither. They're no, they don't. Brutal. I've been punched in the face just for taking a photo of someone on the street when I first moved to Bavaria really? by a cop, yeah. They're proper pigs, man. Yeah. Fascist pigs. Yeah, yeah. Great beer, though. Yeah. Oh, man, the beer in Munich is the best. Because <laughs> they have the beer yeah. law, of course. By law, you can only use, I think it's the four natural ingredients, yeah, man. that's right. That's right. Rate yeah. it so highly. Nothing like what you drink around here. No. Not even, doesn't yeah. include, not, you don't even get a hangover, really, do you? Not yeah. really. <laughs> beer is a religion in Munich. Yeah, for sure. You know? For sure. Got a lot of friends in Munich. Big up Munich. Yeah, Munich, uh, we love you, man. Yeah, absolutely. Um, any near deaths? Uh, yeah, a lot. Uh, when, when, while painting, I've had a few narrow escapes where trains have just appeared out of nowhere silently and I haven't seen them and mm. nobody's seen them. Somehow we've just managed to step out of the way and it's just gone past us and that's happened a few times and we know what we're doing you know wow so yeah it's risky man yeah but yeah i know people have had the arms and legs taken off people have had been burnt from the whole body Dead english, i know an english writer yeah lost the arms an english writer burnt i know serbian writers who had like lost their legs all sorts, fingers. Lost their legs. <laughs> you think about it and, they, and they've lost it. And people have lost their lives as well. A lot yeah. of people have lost their lives. Yeah, rest in peace to all the fallen. Yeah, man. Um, <sighs> losing your legs, man. Wow. But, yeah, I haven't had... I mean, I've had cuts and bruises and everything like that, but luckily nothing serious. Because, like I say, I never paint when I'm drunk or... Because yeah. I don't really drink or take drugs, so... Yeah. And I won't paint with anyone who's smashed, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not the one. Yeah. Although you did tell a story earlier about, well, what happened to you physically that may have been contributed to yeah. paint. Yeah, that's when I was in Rome. Um, I was in Rome one time uh, because I have ulcerative colitis and I, it only happened, uh, I only started to happen about... It's about 10 years ago when I was painting. Uh, the doctors in Munich, the specialist, is like one of the, the big specialists in Europe. Uh, 
from Estonia, a professor. Uh, yeah, he was telling me it was from the, the, the chemicals in the paint. Probably started with the old school paint. Mm. There's a lot of heavy metals in the old school paint. Mm. Uh, he's seen it once or twice before, but not, nothing as severe as me. Really? Yeah, because I used to paint a lot indoors. Uh, you know, I've never wore a mask in no. my life. Because of the warehouses and such? You... Yeah, but also, when I was in KIA, I used to s sleep at my friend Guilty 104. It's flat, and I used to, and we used to paint in the room I'd sleep in. We did paint a piece all day, mm. then I'd sleep in there at night. In the morning, I'd wake up and I'd have paint all over me, and I'd be coughing it up. It'd be like multicoloured greenies. Really? Multicoloured greenies. I never thought anything about it. Years later, obviously, it come back to bite me, and I was painting in Rome one night. It was, man, because it gets really cold in Rome in winter. It was freezing, it was a weird sort of cold, and the pet there, using the fat caps, the paint wouldn't move. It was just stood, stuck in the air. It was strange. And obviously, I was breathing in, I went really dizzy, collapsed, and I got up, and then I just started bleeding literally from every hole in my body. You know, I was no, terrified. I, no. I thought, obviously, I'm dying. I don't know what it is. I had no clue. I didn't put it, I didn't think it was a pain. I just didn't know. Uh, so I rang my friend up and I was like, breath, man, I think I'm dying. I'm in Rome, I'm bleeding. I think I'm dying. It was like, calm down, calm down, cruel. You're going to be all right. It's okay. Just finish your piece and go back to the. <laughs> so literally, that's what I did. I finished my piece, went back to the hotel, rang my wife. And she said, you know, well, there's nothing really we can do. And I says, yeah, true. So the next day I went and painted another train. Hold on. This wait, wait, wait. This is, hold on. The, the plot thickens, right? So, so you're telling everyone you're going to die, die and everyone's just kind of like, yeah, yeah, I don't know what you can do about that. You know, you're in, I mean, this is, a, this is a stark reality. Yeah, but if you die, you're going to die and you think you're going to die, what do you want to do? What's your last wish? You yeah. want to paint another train because that's what you love, you know. <laughs> All right. All so right. that was my mentality. Yeah. And then, obviously, I got the plane the next day back because I was I lived in Manchester for ten years and I was living in Manchester then. And rang the doctor. I got rushed straight into the hospital. Eight hour was it operation. Painful? Was yeah, it, it was painful. Really. It was very pain, like pain like. Pain like I've ne I've felt pain before because I had pain from a fractured spine all my life, yeah. you know. I've dealt yeah. with pain yeah, all my right, life. Yeah. And but nothing like this from this ulcerative, ulcerative colitis stuff. Yeah, so they rushed me into hospital and it, it was an eight hour operation. Uh they couldn't save my insides or whatever, so I had to have like a stoma bag here. Right. I had that for a few years and then it failed. And I had to move it over to here, another one. That was another eight-hour operation. And then when I was in Munich, they removed it, fixed up my insides, removed my whole colon because it was all ulcerated and holes. Wow. It was poisoning me. Yeah. Wow. And Dumb that is why now I'm so... I mean, sometimes I come across as a bit of an idiot, but I'm always telling people, especially kids, don't paint unless you're going to use a mask. And it, it or at seems least be a bit, outside. Yeah, I'd be out, it seems a bit... Sometimes it can seem a bit overbearing or... Yeah. But that's the reason why, because I know what it's like, how painful it is and how yeah. it ruins your life, so... Yeah, yeah, decades of... The or, very, there, is no, there is no spray paint which isn't poisonous to humans. Yeah. Not at the moment. I don't think there ever will be either. No. It's just poisonous, you know, but... Yeah. So is a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You take precautions, wear a mask, you're all right, especially for kids and stuff. So what are the, um, what are the implications? Like? What, what can you, can't you do? I'm not supposed to paint anymore. As soon as I start painting, I can feel it straight away. But really? Yeah, I feel the paint because... My my doctor, the, I mean, this goes against a lot what of, a lot of people think. But my doctor's the my, he's a professor, so he's not a doctor. He's actually a professor. He's higher than that. You breathe a lot of it in, and that gets into it. But the poison, most of it gets through your fingertips. Your fingertips are really sensitive. So wearing gloves is the most important thing. But also, 
any bare skin is seek, seeking into your skin. It soaks it in. It soaks it in. It goes in through your arms when you're wearing T-shirts or your legs if you're wearing shorts in the summer, and it's worse in extreme heat and cold. That's Which what we what know. Which sent you up in, in Italy. Yeah, because of the cold. That's what set it off, yeah, because it was a weird kind of... It gets to be like a weird kind of really bone-chilling cold in Rome yeah, in yeah, winter. Yeah, yeah. Probably yeah. static, quite static cold as well, it dry is, cold. Yeah. It is a dry cold, you're right, yeah. I think that's probably why the fumes from the cans wouldn't... They wouldn't rise, mm. they just stood static, like you say. So things you can't eat and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I, I struggle with eating anything, man. I mean, for years I literally lived on, uh, like, uh, poached eggs and toast. It's worse. It's worse I, things I, it is. Be... I actually like poached yeah, like eggs. So right. poached well, eggs and toast. Can you have toast. avocado and things like that? Yes, you can have avocado, but I don't like avocado. Okay. Bananas are good. Nice. Happy, happy, happy fruit. Yeah. So I've I've usually always got a banana on me when I'm painting. That's and you can't have too much dairy, can you at all? Dairy's bad. Any kind of dairy is bad. I would imagine like, so. Uh, even things like what you wouldn't expect, brown bread can be painful when you've got ulcerative colitis. Now I don't have a colon, so I can eat that. It's not so painful, but, yeah, you have to be really careful what you eat. Uh, smoking's bad. Yeah, I imagine so. Yeah. Um, but this is also a kind of testament to where we are in humanity, that you can have that severity over decades of painting, and it can be, you know, yeah. you, you can be maintained. Yep. You can be... It's a miracle that I'm alive. So, yeah. yeah, I'm really thankful to all the doctors and the NHS and the guys in Munich. Man, they yeah, saved just, my just, life. Just Three accuracy. times they saved my life. Three times? Yeah. So first time's in the UK and then Munich? Manchester twice and then in right. Munich. Yeah. Oh, no, Manchester once and I think Munich twice. So how come in Munich did they decide to take out all of the insides? Why, like, why, what is it about Munich? Would, would Manchester not have done it? Uh... They have more money in Munich, you yeah. know, simple as that. A, there's a lot of... You put down... Eight, uh, I mean, I, this is I speaking mean, from experience. You put down money and they get the job done, well, basically. My wife at the time had a good job and we had, like, the best insurance mm. through her job. I was insured through her job because I was just doing my art and yeah. photography at the time. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, but... Uh, they valued what I did in Munich, so yeah. they wanted me to be... Uh, healthy and well, you know. Yeah, they yeah. saw me as an artist in Munich. That's so cool. In England, it, it was a bit different. Yeah. But, you know, I don't hold it against anyone. Life is what it is. Yeah, you get what you're given, not what you want, you know. Yeah, yeah in the words of uh, Rolling Stones. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Sometimes you get what you need. <laughs> What's the future? What's the future, brother? Uh I don't really think about the future a lot, to tell you the truth. I just want to paint more whole cars. That's that's what I'm focused on, get my name around. Also, I've been developing this uh, kind of like abstract art, huh. what I do on walls, which is like kind of chopped up bits of my train. And, yeah, so I want to do some of that with my art, you know. So sick. Yeah. And what, are you thinking about doing like an exhibition or something? Yeah. Yeah. Also, I do photography. I've been doing photography for a long time, so wow. still do that. Get more back into that because I moved back to England at the be very beginning of the lockdown. They said, you know, they said nobody can move. Mm -hmm. And we was in Munich at the time. We drove all the way from Munich back to England, and we didn't see one police officer. So, really? Yeah, all the way. Wow. We didn't see one police officer till we got to Nottingham. Literally, on all the motorways are empty. There was no block. They said you couldn't literally go because it was blocked. There was blockage. We jumped on a ferry, no problems. No problem at all. Wow. This is the Some bullshit fucking... the system feeds us, yeah. you know. Wow. But, yeah, so but with the lockdown, obviously, when I got back to England, it was a massive culture shock, so I, I stopped doing my photography as much. Yeah, it's funny what it did to people. Right? Yeah, the lockdown was a tough time for everyone, yeah, yeah. I think. I think it was especially hard for me coming home. To that stark reality of what home has become. Yeah. yeah. And obviously, you change when 
you're moving mm. as you're moving. I, I'd been in Manchester for ten years, and then I was in. So I was gone Munich for five or something. Mm. I'd gone for fifteen years. People was expecting me to come back as the same person, and I just wasn't that yeah. person anymore. Yeah. I'd grown a lot. I t- I'm a totally. Di- I was a totally different person when I came home. You know, mm. I'd matured and. Photography and um, and graph, they, they kind of hold hands in the, in the dance, do. don't they? They do. Photography yeah. is... If you're going to get into graffiti, you want to get into photography straight away. Yeah. And big up all the photographers that do take all, you know... Your documentation it, is very important. For sure. Yeah, for sure. And anyone that does do the documentation, they're heralded. Yeah. We salute you. All, all these guys, man, yeah, do yeah. a good job, man. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, uh, I won't keep you because I know you've got some uh, men to see about dogs <laughs> and all that. Yeah. <laughs> Big up, wise. Um, brother, thank you so much for joining us. Wow. All right, my bro. Took thank a you. long time, but we've made it, man. Yes. Good. Made it, my top of the world. Killer Killer podcast outlet in was out of fashion. Serves you all right. Sharing his caring tell a friend to tell a friend. Crime don't pay, but neither do they. Don't talk to anyone, I wouldn't. That's what about cruel in the house. Stay lucky, people. Peace. <laughs> that was sick! <laughs> Good man. <laughs>